Why are there 60 seconds in a minute? It sounds like a question a child might ask, but to answer it, we need to understand the human skeleton, ancient civilizations that rose out of the desert, and the forces that hold the universe together. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's go back in time a little bit. It's 1795, the French Revolution is in full swing, and they've got this new invention called the metric system. Everything is divisible by 10. Kilograms, meters, great, it all makes sense. Naturally, they try to apply the same principles to time, so they create the 10-hour day. Each hour will have 100 minutes, and each minute will have 100 seconds. It's easy to remember, it's better for math, and yet it only lasted 17 months. I guess you could say they ran out of time. Kilometers stuck around, kilograms too, but the 100-minute hour didn't stand a chance. But why? France's 10-hour day was just as valid as hour 24. You see, a day is a real thing. It is one rotation of the Earth. A year is real. It is a lap around the sun. But an hour, an hour is not real. Minutes are not real. Seconds are not real. We've just decided they mean something. They don't correspond to any kind of natural phenomenon other than certain kinds of radiation, but we'll get into that later. The point is minutes, seconds, and hours are just fractions of a day that we've agreed upon. So why 60? Seems like a strange number to choose, doesn't it? Like, wh why not 50? 50 seems more round. Why not 100? Well, the answer is right here in the bone structure of my hand and in the ancient cities of Mesopotamia. You see, it all started when we invented numbers. Now, I know this is a strange concept for some people to grasp. Like, what do you mean we invented numbers? Numbers just exist. And that's kind of true. Numbers exist, but numeral systems don't. In the modern world, we tend to count with a base 10 system, also known as a decimal system. What does this mean? Well, we think of numbers that are divisible by 10, other than one through nine. You can tack that on the end. Everything else has to be divisible by 10. When we say 87, what we mean is eight tens plus seven. But there are other ways of counting. For example, base 20, which Abraham Lincoln used when he gave the Gettysburg Address. When he said four score and seven years ago, a score is 20, so he meant four 20s plus seven, AKA 87 years ago. Computers use base two, otherwise known as binary. It's all ones and zeros. This is what 87 looks like. One zero, one zero, one, one, one. It's all ones and zeros. And then there's base 60 or sexagesimal counting. At first glance, base 60 seems completely unhinged, but trust me, there is a method to the madness. I've fallen in love with it, and by the end of this video, you might too. It's the oldest numeral system we know of, invented in ancient Mesopotamia more than 4,000 years ago. Some people say that base 10 is intuitive because humans have 10 fingers, but what if I were to tell you that there is a way to count to 60 using these same two hands? I'm putting my microphone here for a second so I can show you. I hope you can still hear me okay. All right, so most humans have 10 fingers. Each finger has three knuckles, three segments. And so what you do is you count these segments with your thumb as like a counter. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When you get to 12, all right, you put a finger up and then you do it again. One, two, three, four, yada, yeah, yeah. You put another finger up, that's 24, 36, 48, and 60. Some scientists theorize that this is why base 60 became popular, because of the natural connection with human anatomy. Ancient Mesopotamia is often referred to as the cradle of civilization. It's where writing was probably invented for the first time, as well as some of the world's oldest cities. Ancient Mesopotamians likely used base 60 for lots of different reasons, but most importantly, it is extremely divisible. Fractions are, are just so much easier. One third of 10 is 3.33 repeating, but one third of 60 is 20. One fourth is 15. One fifth is 12. One sixth is 10. It fits so neatly into so many different fractions. This divisibility is a major reason why we still use base 60 today to describe angles. That's where we get 360 degrees from. It is six sixties. Base 60 is so useful. It was likely developed independently at least one other time by the Kari people of Western New Guinea. We use it for lots of stuff, but most importantly, we use it for time. But here's where things get weird. What is a second, really? Well, there's two ways to think about this. One is what we've been talking about. A second is 1 86,400th of a day. But there's a problem. 
Every day isn't the same length. You see, lots of things can change the speed the Earth rotates. Friction from the tides, melting ice caps, even earthquakes. A 2011 earthquake in Japan sped up the rotation of the Earth by 1.8 microseconds. Because of this, we actually need to add leap seconds every couple of years. Since 1972, we've added 48 leap seconds, which is kind of a lot. That's like almost a full leap minute. We have to do this because our modern measurement of a second is not technically a division of a day. It comes from atomic clocks. We look at an atom of cesium, which emits radiation at a very specific frequency. One second is exactly 9,192,631,770 oscillations. So we finally have our answer, a second that is the same for everyone. Or is it? There's one other thing that can happen. What if a second could be slower or faster depending on who is experiencing it? And I'm not just talking about when I say I'll be there in a second and I haven't even gotten in the car yet. That's, that's different, all right? You've probably seen sci-fi movies like Interstellar where time moves slower, closer to black holes or in spaceships traveling very fast. But what if I told you that Einstein's theory of relativity isn't just the realm of sci-fi, but something that we can observe right here on Earth. On GPS satellites, we have to make a 38 microsecond adjustment because time is literally moving faster up there than on Earth. Earth. This is because gravity warps space-time itself, and the stronger it is, the slower time moves. So the further away you get from Earth, the less gravity there is, and the faster time moves. In 2010, scientists even showed that we can measure differences in the speed of time at 12 inches of elevation. That means time moves faster for your head than it does for your feet. Keep in mind, these are minute amounts, but it's not nothing. Time is very, very strange, but I find it poetic. On one hand, we are still using numeral systems that were born in the deserts of ancient Mesopotamia. And yet, on the other hand, we can measure radiation from atoms and the effects of space time. So why are there 60 seconds in a minute? Because we want there to be.